Mercy Josh. Welcome to another episode of Common Errors in English. All right. And we've come so far. We've treated a lot, a lot of common errors. So if you're just joining us, it would be very expedient that you just go back to the previous videos and, you know, see some of the common errors that we already treated and, you know, see the ones that you make so often and see how you can start, you know, putting yourself um, in the right position to correct them, you know, and start using them correctly, okay? And we've had a nice time so far. It's been very, very educative, even for me, even for me, right? Because, you know, even while preparing, I just, you know, look at some of the things and, oh, I make this mistake too and everything. But, but you know, that's why we are here. We're here to learn, right? We're, get, we're here to know the difference between the wrong and the right. And, of course, to make plans to start using them correctly, which is one of the aims of this class, to make you, um, you know, uh, to, to improve your communication in, you know, your, during your day-to-day -day activities, just for you to communicate effectively, all right? So we're going to continue on common errors and in English, all right? We're going to continue on that. And we're going to be looking at this one. Practice make, is it practice makes perfect or practice makes perfection, all right? Um, now, um, in the previous classes, we've mentioned this over and over again that some of these things, some, most times we make um, grammatical errors when we use idiomatic expressions, right? And um, if you know what idiomatic expressions are, you understand why um, you should not tamper with their surface meaning or with the way they are written. It's because you're not even supposed to get the meaning of, um, you know, um, they, they are not supposed to um, actually pass the meaning directly on the surface. Some of them do, but um, they pass them in the grammar that you know may not may think not um, correct, but they actually are. That's the point of an idiomatic expression. So idiomatic expressions are you know they are often seen as illogical, right? Um, you know, so instead of practice makes perfect, the idiom practice makes perfect is just a way of um, encouraging people by telling them that um, if you do an activity regularly and try to improve your skill, you will become very, very good at it. So, um, so um, the right thing to say is not practice. I know some people say practice makes perfection, but that's the wrong thing. It's practice makes perfect, not practice makes perfection, okay? Now, the next one we're gonna be looking at is plenty or plenty of. Plenty or plenty of. Okay, let's look at it in this sentence so you get what we're talking about. They gave us plenty food to eat. And they gave us plenty of food to eat. Now, let's analyze it. Plenty here is a noun and not an adjective. It means um, a large amount, as much or as many as you need. The adjective is actually plentiful, right? The adjective of it is plentiful. So we have a plentiful supply. So the right thing to say or the right word or the right um, phrase is they gave us plenty of food to eat, not plenty food to eat. Because plenty there is not, in the first statement, plenty there is not an adjective. You use adjective to qualify nouns, right? Now, if you say there, they gave us plenty food to eat, you are saying that plenty there is an adjective and the food there is a noun. The food there is a noun, but plenty there is not an adjective, which makes that sentence wrong. So um, the right thing to say is they gave us plenty of food to eat. All right? Uh -huh. So you can, you can say a plentiful supply you get. But the right thing to say is they gave us plenty of food to eat. The next one we're looking about is, um, we're going to be looking at is provided and so far. Um, let's look at these sentences. Sentence one. She will buy everything you want. So far, you marry her. Hmm. And she will buy everything you want, provided you marry her. Now, the idea of so far, I don't know where it came from, but I hear a lot of local um, English speakers say it, a lot. So far, so far, you are going to come. There is no problem. So far, so far, you are, so far, you are, <laughs> so far, you are whatever <laughs> you get. Now, let's look at, let's analyze it. When your intention is to say that, um, what must happen or be done um, to make it possible for something else to happen, use provided, not so far, right? So far means until now, right? So you say, um, we've not come, we've not done it, um, we've not been able to complete the project so far, right? Until now, up until now, right? Uh -huh. But when you're talking about a condition for something to be done, 
Uh, you are going to you have to use provided. So the right thing to say is she will buy everything you want, provided you marry her. All right. So that is the right thing to say. So stop saying so far, so far she will buy everything. So far you marry her. I will go there. So far you give me money. No ma. Oh no sir. Is I will buy. I will go to the market, provided you give me money. All right. All right. The next one we're going to be looking at is um, the spelling. Is it portable? Or portable is it P O T T A B L E or P O R T A B L E? Right, let's look at it in a sentence. He just bought a portable television with double T and he just bought a portable television. Right now, let's analyze it practically in English. There's nothing like P O T T A B L E, it does not exist. Right, portable or the other on the other hand is P O R T A B L E and it means. Um, easy to carry, right? It's small enough to carry, right? So the right statement or the right um, sentence is he just bought a portable P O R T A B L E television, all right? All right. Um, prefer to or prefer than? Prefer to or prefer than? Sentence one I would prefer rice than bread. I would prefer rice to bread. I know some of you are like, ah, do the, people, do the people actually say prefer than? Yes. I pref I've heard people say, I prefer rice than bread. No. The right thing to say is, I prefer rice to, br to bread. Because, um, let's look at this. This prefer is similar to um, superior. Let's, it, goes, it goes with the same rule as superior to and inferior to. So, you not say something is superior than. You say, this book is superior to this one. Or is inferior to this one. Right? So, you don't say superior to or junior to. Or... Um, you don't say prior than, you say prior to, right? Um, you say something is senior to, it's not senior than, do you get? So, um, prefer takes two, right? So, you have prefer to, right? Uh -huh. So, um, but if you say, um, you want to use the word preference, uh -huh, then you use for, right? So, you say, I prefer rice to bread. Or you say, I have a preference for rice over bread. Now, that's the difference. If you use preference, you have to use for. If you use prefer, you have to use to. So, two different sentences. I prefer rice to bread. Or, I have a preference for rice over bread. Than is not allowed in any of these situations. Okay, so the right thing to say is I prefer to, I prefer rice to bread. All right? The next one. Platform or high table platform or high table now if you've attended um some you know parties um conferences you know events um there's something they call high table and um I, 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 many of us just accepted it because somebody just started it and then we all went with the flow and started to start calling it high table what's high about the table <laughs> and it's usually usually the table is usually on an elevated podium right um so maybe that's when they got the maybe that's when they got the the statement or the phrase high table from, but that doesn't make it correct, right? So let's look at some sentences. Coming onto the high table now is Mr. Adams. And then look at another sentence. Coming onto the high table now, or coming onto the platform now, is our, is Mr. Adams. Now, the word high table um, um, is not is not um, grammatically correct. If you are trying to talk about a place that is different from the audience, which is usually elevated, like I said, is raised above, um, you know, the level of the ground, right? Used by, um, you know, maybe public speak speakers or special guests. You know, you cannot use high table. You can only use platform. Welcoming to the platform, right? Not welcome to the high table, right? Uh huh. So, um, high table. Coming to the high table is Mr. Adams is wrong, but coming to the platform now is Mr. Adams is correct. All right? All right. Now, however, if you want to use um, high table, it must mean that, um, you know, they are used for the most important people in a formal dinner or a formal event to sit to eat. That's a high table. Right, but when you when, when you are calling somebody um, on an elevated place to speak, right, to speak, that is when it becomes a platform. So if you have a high table, um, 
it has to be a raised platform where most important people in an event or in a dinner sit to eat. That's a high table. But a platform is where you invite someone, um, you know, a raised place also above the ground or the floor by a po used by a public speaker so that others can see them clearly. So that place or that, um, you know, is a platform. So the difference is both platform and high table are correct, but you have to know when to use them. So high table is used for the most important people in a dinner, right? While um, platform is used for a public speaker who has to stand on, you know, an elevated surface so that he can be seen by the audience, all right? That is that about that. The next one we're going to be treating today is perceive the smell or hear the smell. Do you perceive the smell or hear the smell? I <laughs> Look at this sentence. He said he could hear the smell from the kitchen, and he said he could perceive the smell from the kitchen. Now, to perceive means to, um, to notice or become aware of something, right? And you cannot use hear when you are talking about your nose. The hear is already meant for the ears. So if you are going to um, talk about your nose, you are going to perceive the smell. I know, I know someone that once said, I smell to the smell. <laughs> no, you don't smell the smell, right? You perceive the smell, all right? Uh huh. So you don't use, it's not, it's not wrong to say, I smell the smell, or I smell to the smell. Or it's wrong to say, I hear the smell, right? You just say, I perceive the smell, all right? Another common error that people make, especially us Nigerians, the difference between pepperish and peppery. A lot of, a lot of, you know, a lot of us, when we are eating something that's very hot, you know, with a lot of pepper, we say it is pepperish. That is, <laughs> that word does not exist in English, right? If it exists now, it is because a lot of people have so used it that you know it now becomes common, common, a common English error that is now accepted. Now the right thing to say is not the soup is pepperish. You say the soup is peppery. So pepperish does not exist. All of you that like to say pepperish, I hope you are listening. <laughs> pepperish is wrong. The right thing to say is the food or my mommy's soup is always peppery, not pepperish. All right. Pepperish does not exist. The next one we're going to be looking, off, looking at is um, this, this word called matron. 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 Um, the word matron is, okay, let's look at it in the sentence first of all. Mrs. Trump is the matron of our club. Now, when they say matron, what they are trying to say is a woman that the, 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 the equivalent of a patron Right, so they now turn it to a matron. So the patron is supposed to be the guy, a, a, a male, you know, leader of a club or of you know or a hostel or something. While the matron is supposed to be the female version. Now, let's analyze it. A famous person, a famous female person who supports a club or an organization such as charity and whose name is used for you know advertisements, you know, the organization for the organization is referred to as a patroness. While patron is the male one. So, however, um, a matron is a woman who works as a nurse in a school or a senior, fem a senior female nurse in charge of other nurses in the hospital. So, where people use um, the word matron, that's not, what, that's not the context where matron should be used. Matron is specifically restricted to the hospital, to the medical line. Um, a matron is a woman who, is, who works as a nurse and is usually the senior nurse or the senior female nurse in charge of other nurses. So if you are talking about someone who is in charge of something else but not, you know, hospital, in the hospital setting or in the medical setting, that person is not a matron. The person is a patroness. So um, you will not say um, Mrs. Um, Mrs. Teniola is the matron of our club. No, you say Mrs. Teniola is the patroness of our club. But if you are talking um, medical-wise, you know, in the hospital setting, right, the word matron is correct. For a woman who works as a nurse as in, and is in charge of other nurses in the hospital, all right? 
So take note of that. The next time you want to say matron, to refer to somebody who is not, you know, a nurse. The next thing we're going to be looking at is um, palatable, sweet, uh, delicious, um, tasty, whatever, whatever. Now, who cooked this? When, when, when you want to say about, when you're talking about your food now, you, you want to say maybe Mr. She is now looking for, you know, he, he <laughs> maybe they gave him, they cooked for him. So Mr. She is trying to say that the food is actually very nice. And he will say, who cooked this? It is sweet. Hmm. That's, that statement is not grammatically correct, right? It is sweet, is not, is wrong. Now you could say, who cooked this? It is delicious. You could say, um, who cooked this? It is palatable. Who cooked this? It is tasty. Who cooked this? It is sumptuous. Okay? But um, it is sweet is wrong. Why? Now, these four words, delicious, palatable, sumptuous, and tasty, mean they mean having a pleasant or acceptable taste. Right? However, sweet uh, means containing or tasting as if it contains a lot of sugar. Now, it is not that sweet is a wrong word, but it is supposed to be used in a particular context. Now, one of the things we have, one of the issues we have with words is that we just somebody just uses a word out of the blues. And because it sounds very nice, people just pick it up and start using it. Most words, that's why I usually say that if you understand that no two English words mean the same thing, you will realize that even if they look like they mean the same thing, the difference between them is that they cannot be used in the same context or the same situation, right? So I've seen um, abduct and kidnap. I've made this example before. Now, abduct and kidnap are words that are synonyms of each other. They both mean to take somebody. Are you following? But they do not mean the same thing, even though they both mean the taking of somebody. Now, one of them, like I usually say, or like I've said before, is done by force, and the other is done unconsciously, right? So, um... If you kidnap somebody, you make sure that the person is unconscious and then you kidnap the person. But when you abduct somebody forcefully, the person is fully wide awake and then you take the person captive. Okay, so that's the difference. Now, that's what's applying here. When you use the word sweet, S-W-E-E-T, you are trying to say that it is, or it, it contains, it's tasting as if it contains a lot of sugar. So, what does this tell you? It means that you can only use sweet for things that are sugar-coated like um, or sugar you know that has sugar in it so you cannot say sugar for food as long if it's not gary if you're not drinking gary <laughs> if you're not drinking gary you can't use sugar for it if you're not drinking tea you can't use um sweets for it right if you're not um taking a juice you cannot use sweet if you're not taking wine you cannot use sweet if you're using if you're talking about food then you have to use the word delicious you have to use the word tasty you have to use the word palatable or sumptuous, right? But if you come, when it comes to food, like rice, okay, or, you know, uh, or beans, or um, salad, or something, or spaghetti, you cannot use sweet, all right? Sweet is only used for things that contain sugar or taste as if they contain sugar, all right? Now, note also that this word is not sumptuous, right? When you say um, um, sumptuous, some, you say something is sumptuous, it is looking expensive and impressive, right? The right word is scrumptuous, scrumptuous, not sumptuous, okay? Sumptuous means expensive and looking impressive. Now, um, some foods may actually look impressive and, you know, they look, exp you know, some foods, you know, can actually look expensive, right? Yeah, but then... Sumptuous is not the right word to use. When you use sumptuous, you are referring to something expensive, maybe something that's not eatable, you get. But when you talk, when you want to say something is tasty, you know, it's delicious, it is scrumptuous. S-C-R-U-M-P-T-I-O-U-S. Scrumptuous, not sumptuous, okay? So that is that about. So do not say it is sweet anymore. You say it is palatable, it is tasty, it is scrumptuous, or it is delicious all right all right the next one we're going to be looking at today before we call it off for this class is pride versus proudness ha huh. i've heard somebody say hmm better swallow your proudness better better stop you know stop having this proudness attitude 
And the person in his mind is thinking that you say something reasonable <laughs> or you say something correct, right? Now, let's look at this sentence. It's time to swallow your proudness and ask for the job back. That is wrong. The right thing to say is it's time to swallow your pride and ask for your job back, right? There is proud and pride, but proudness um, is not in any English dictionary. Proudness does not exist. Check your dictionary. The word proudness does not exist. It's totally ungrammatical. So um, pride is the feeling of, you know, respect that you have for yourself, you know, that is usually too much sometimes, right? So that they call it pride. So swallow your pride, not swallow your proudness, all right? So that will be all for today's class. And in the next class, we'll talk about more common errors in English. And I hope you enjoy this class. Please make sure that you not just watch this video. Try to, you know, infuse them in your daily conversations. I'll see you in the next class. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.